All right, so our first night at a Cracker Barrel. We uh, were going to do the Walmart last night. It's actually right over here behind us, but uh, we pulled in there last night. There's about 20 other RVs in there, so we called the Cracker Barrel, and they said no problem. So we came over here, actually had dinner there, and then stayed the night here at the Cracker Barrel. Really nice, very quiet. Eh, I can't exactly say quiet. We were on the beside, right beside the freeway. That's a 10 right behind me there. So constant noise from the freeway, but at least it was nice. It was kind of white noise. And then that's the Walmart over there behind me, you can see. Obviously, most of the RVs and trucks have already left. But Today, we are headed to the Gila Cliff Dwellings, about an hour and a half or so away. We're excited to go see those. And that's about it. That's uh, as far as we know. I think we're going to stay the night up there as well and then head on west after that. silver mining town that yeah. probably what they call it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Looking. So what's this? Because I saw park benches and outhouses over there. Oh, the City of Rock State Park. Oh, yeah, it it's full? It was full. Wow. Yep. That looks like fun over there. I know. I wanted to do it. That was my unhappy face the other night when I was going through all the state parks trying to find it. Yeah, that looks cool. Yep. It actually looks very cool. It was it's full. Really it really is full because it, it didn't look like anybody was over there, but I right, can't see it from here. Said they were full until like the 25th or something. Wow. That was one of my favorite ones I found in the City of Rocks. A cool terrain. city then? Nope. Okay. Bear Canyon Dam Wall, Lake, Lake Roberts. Lake Roberts is coming. And the Gila Cliff Dwellings. Yeah. Lake Roberts is where we're going. Lake Roberts is where we're going? Yep. Okay. I did not know that. Trail of the Mountain Spirits.
see anything specific about which ones have power and water? Or? All the ones in Mesa have water. All these do. Or maybe not water, electric tank. I don't well, all we really need is power, and, and we don't have to have it, but especially with it being colder tonight, it'd be nice if we run the electric heaters instead. Yes. And we can run them all night then. Oh, yeah. This looks cool. Okay. I've got a host. It won't fit in this one. Small. There's no power at that one. Okay, so he's running an extension cord to his electric saw. Okay, there's power and water. He's that got power and water, water, yeah. Okay, so maybe these do down here. This guy's got LED lights all twisted through the trees, so that must have power somewhere. Yeah, it's probably on the other side. Okay, so all these do then. So this one's full, Makes that one's full. there's more people on these. Yeah. And yeah, power and water. Okay, cool. Yeah, I yeah. see them. So there's this spot right here. Because these don't, though, it doesn't look like. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the ones that yeah. are edged out. Yeah. Oof. I don't know, this is getting crowded. Yeah. All these RV spots are going to be taken. But yeah, the, all the ones with power and water. These other ones aren't. They have no power and water. So this is our spot here in the Gila National Forest. We're about 6,000 feet, so it's a little cooler today, about 70, 72. Quite a change of scenery from the deserts we've been used to the last few days. That's nice. So this is Upper End Campground. And last night we pulled through the main campground that has power and water hookups, but they were full. So we came down the road just a couple of minutes to this campground here. This is a no hookup campground, but that's okay. That's why I got the solar panels out over here. And they actually do offer water. You get a, not water hookups, but you, there's a water faucet, water spigot down, the, down the, the main campground area. So I got the solar panels out there, getting some recharging the batteries. But it's really beautiful. Actually, the wind's just come up here in the last little bit, but about the only sound you get here is the wind blowing in the pine trees. So we're getting ready to head over to the Gila Cliff Dwellings now. Go check that out. But really pretty. All right, we're off. going first. So this is crossing the Gila River. Three forks of the Gila River converge in this valley and ultimately flow toward the Colorado River. Uh -huh. right, cool. We love the Colorado River. 
For perhaps as long as 10,000 years, this resource-rich resource -rich floodplain acted as a travel corridor drawing people into and out of the valley. The ancestral people of the Mogollon, Spanish, Mexican, Apache, and Anglo explorers settled here and all relied on this river for transportation and modern, as like modern highways. Yeah, it's really cool. Let's see how they have protection from that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Wow. It's so cool. Yeah, it's really fun. Amazing. It's an awesome place to set up a house. Let's check out these over here. We can go in these ones. Oh yeah. Wow, this is huge. Wow. Yeah, I knew it looked big from down there, but not quite this big. Great foundation. Yeah, I don't think the RV's gonna fit. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. You see the pictographs up there? I just love that little.
See, that was easy. <laughs> Mom just does it one-handed. With it's boots. Okay, so that was the Gila Cliff Dwellings. What do we think about that? Do we recommend the Gila Cliff Dwellings? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so there you go. We love the Gila Cliff Dwellings. If you like caves and Indian dwellings, old artifacts, things like that, that's definitely a highly recommended visit. Two thumbs up. Actually, it's three thumbs up. Four? The cat? The cat doesn't have thumbs.